Hey guys, out here in the field with the Mavic, just doing something that's a little overdue, and that is using the Kitty Hawk app to get authorization in controlled airspace. Hey guys, Keith here, Alien Drones. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Always appreciate it. It's really good to see you. If you're new to the channel, I do drone tech, photography, tips and tutorials, and product reviews on drones and photography mostly. And if that's something that interests you, you might want to consider hitting a subscribe. That'll let you know if there's some new content that might be of interest to you. So here we go. So we're going to look at the Kitty Hawk app today. And I spent a long time coming. Uh, Kitty Hawk came out with the LANC approval uh, for controlled airspace with the FAA. And we're going to run through the app and just see how it works with the Mavic out here in the field. So we're just going to jump right into it. And we're going to open up the Kitty Hawk map. And before I get into what's actually shown on this page with the maps and such, I want to mention that indeed you are going to have to register this first. Now I already did that. That's why it didn't pop up. But the first screens you will see are going to be the registration, which are going to ask you for your first name, last name, uh, contact phone number, things like that, which is pretty typical for this type of app. So the app is going to show a few things. On the top is our actual map section, center is our current weather conditions, and the bottom is the flight deck, which is where we're going to authorize in our airspace. So first off, let's talk about the airspace just a little bit. You can see we are close to a Class D airspace, which is Central Wisconsin Airport here on this map. It's this green area. And down on the bottom, what we're going to do to start the process is click the Maps button. So when we go to this section, you'll actually see the map pop up with our location on the map, our pin where we're going to be starting from. And down on the bottom, you'll note a little blue area that has a caution symbol in it, which is showing us that there's three items we need to be aware of. First one is the facility map. It says we are authorized to fly under 400 feet in this area. In Mosinee, it shows us the Class D and a Class E2 airspace. So one thing I want to mention at this point is you'll notice right in the center of the screen there is a get authorization little checkbox. If this airspace did not require authorization, this checkbox would not exist. And what I'm going to do is go out here just a little bit outside of this airspace and what you'll notice is we still have some warnings but the checkbox is now missing which tells us we do not need that authorization. We're not in control airspace anymore. I'm going to go ahead and move back in, just go to the edge of this airspace. And indeed, you can see it says Get Authorization. So we're simply going to click Get Authorization here. And in this case, even though I am Part 107, I'm going to click Recreational. And yes, we are going to verify the phone number. And there is our text that's going to come back with our verification. And we're going to go ahead and enter in this number. And now it comes up and says verified. So we are good there. We're going to create our flight area. So we're going to actually expand this out a little bit here and change our flight area slightly. So you know where we're actually going to be flying. And we're going to be flying about uh, 250 feet roughly. So we're going to run this slider over. And we might move, that would be good. Next. And we're going to be going from now for about 30 minutes once we're done here. So let's, uh, that's good. If we wanted to pick a date, we could pre-plan our route, which is uh, always good to do. And it's indeed 2.28 p.m., so that sounds good. Gives us a little notes on the LANC authorization. So we're going to go ahead and do next. And there we go, it says eligible for approval. And we're going to start now, and we're going to do next. So you're going to see information on the LANC system. Real-time information, of course. And of course, we are going to do all this. Correct, no TFRs. No amps. 
special use, altitude limits, authorization, of course, social law, and this is important as well, uh, state law, in that depending upon where you're flying, this authorization will not be enough to make sure you're flying legally. And what I'm going to do is put a link up here to know how to fly legally and make sure you're following all the laws, not just the length. So this is a really important piece because there could be a lot of things in the way. There could be state laws. There could be other things in the way. So uh, local municipalities might have some, some laws. So make sure you take a look at that video because it's going to be important to make sure that you're following all the laws, not just the FAA airspace rules. And we will submit. And we have approved information and there it came back. Here is our information from Link. Now, this is really important to make sure you get this text because this will give you a authorization number. You can see here authorized by FAA. It's really important I have had in the past with some other apps that this text does not come through for some reason. And until this text comes through, you're not really sure if you're verified. It may have went through, but unless you have this number in your possession, I would not do it. I would try to do another link uh, submission to make sure that you're still authorized because you don't want to take the chance on flying in controlled airspace and you're not authorized to do so. That could be a hefty fine. Don't want to do that. So indeed, we are good to go. Uh, we are actually good for the next half hour to fly in this airspace. According to the link, we are good. So that's all it takes to get authorized through the Lang system using the Kitty Hawk app. It's actually pretty neat. Uh, it's actually a pretty good app. Not bad. A lot of good information in here. So before I take off, just a quick note. Uh, the Kitty Hawk app did have a couple of lockups on me, which is not acceptable. Uh, I haven't had that with some of the other apps that I use. Uh, AirMap, for instance, I haven't had it lock up, uh, although AirMap did have some of its other issues. Uh, it did lock up and I had to reboot the phone. Now, while I was actually out flying the Mavic, uh, it stopped responding. Uh, not that I needed these, this app anymore since I was authorized, but I did want to check the weather conditions again. And it locked up and I had to reboot the phone to get it to come back. So I had to land the Mavic and then start over. Uh, so, so they do have some bugs with this and uh, I did look through the reviews and some other uh, pilots did note that they had some issues with the app. Uh, so hopefully they get those taken care of because on the surface it seemed to have some good information and I know the FAA is now uh, using Kitty Hawk for their app, for their officially supported app, uh, not only with uh, the Kitty Hawk app but the Before You Fly. So hopefully get those bugs worked out but if you do have any of those types of problems let me know in the comments if you've had similar things uh, and how common it is because maybe we can get uh, Kitty Hawk to address those because having a thing lock up when you're in the middle of authorization in a, in a controlled airspace, not cool, not cool. But uh, hopefully it's just a temporary thing. And as always, if you did find anything of value in this video, I would appreciate it if you would click the like button. Always lets me know that uh, some of the work that I do is appreciated. So with that, till next time, good flying.